Hello world. Hello world. Okay, this is our first sort of uh, pass we're going to deconstruct. Um, there's always, when you're learning a programmer language, the uh, tradition is to make a hello world patch, which is like your first program that you write. So you can do that here. Um, there's four, well, really five things I want to show. So we have these four objects are all being piped into or patched into this one object called print. Um, print is an object th that the whole sole function of this print object is to display things in the Max console. So over here on the right, we have this icon that will open up the Max console. That's just a, an area where text gets displayed. Anything that goes into the print object will be displayed in the Max console there. It's also the same place you will see error messages. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is sort of like the Max dashboard where if you get errors or anything that goes into the print object or any print object, you could have multiple print objects in one patch. So uh, how do we make, so if I unlock my patch here, uh, I make a new object by hitting the N key uh, and it's blinking, waiting for me to type in an object name. So I'm going to type in P-R-I-N-T, hit return, and then we have an object uh, and it's print. So I could get help on print. So I'm going to select print and go up here and say, um, uh, open print help, or I like to just hit command shift H, but let's say open print help. And it opens up an actual max object. This is what's great about the help system is that it just opens up a max patch that describes what print does. So it tells you anything that goes into uh, the window gets printed off to the console. So um, now this is a button. So this button is a max object. And I'm going to delete the print object here. And I'm going to make a new object again and just type in B-U-T-T-O-N, button. OK, some objects in Max, when you make an instance of them, they turn into this graphical interface object. Some of them just look like regular plain, um, like, you know, like the print object is just a box uh, with inputs and outputs. Um, print doesn't have an output. but. Uh, some objects actually have graphical like user interface. So in this case, it looks like an actual button that you would press. So um, we already have one though. So button is connected to print. Now watch what happens when I click on the button. Um, now I can't click on the button right now because why? Because you're unlocked. I'm unlocked. Okay, so I have to go down here and twiddle this little button. Okay, now I can click the button object. When I click on it, the message is going to come out. The, the message that's generated by button is going to come out, go through this pipe into the print object, and then be displayed up here. Now I'll do it. So over there, you can see the message is coming out. Every time I click on it, it sends out this message called bang. Uh, bang is actually a word. It's just a piece of text, B-A-N-G. And that's what they decided button should generate. So button actually generates a word called bang. Um, bang is a word that a lot of objects understand in Max. When they receive the bang message, they know to do it, to do something. It trigger. just means trigger something. Something should happen. So most objects understand the word bang and button generates that message. Likewise, um, this is a message object. So if I make um, a new object here and I type in message, this is also really often confusing for people. Mm -hmm. So message, um, a message box actually looks a lot like an object. Um, so sometimes people will like, they'll type in print here and think that they have the print. Look how similar those look. Yeah. So like they'll think they have the print object, but they actually just put the word print into a message box, right? Uh, which is okay. So that's pretty confusing. Um, but anyway, so this is a message object, and any word that I type in here, it will output that when I click on it like a button. So I'll type in tin apple, and then like now when I connect this to the print object, it just uh, that happens to be my last name. So it types in that. Um, okay. So we have hello world typed in there, which is just a phrase. Uh, okay, so now when I click on it, it generates that text and puts it into the print object and it comes out the console. Float and int are just number boxes. What are we at here? Four uh, minutes? Yeah. Oh, we're close. Float is a number box. Uh, it's an interactive, it's sort of, sort of one of these user interface objects where it shows a number, but it also lets me create a number. So I'm gonna click and drag in the float object and it lets me change the number that's in there. If I want to change it by a very small amount, I click over beyond the decimal point, I can change by very small amounts. If I go to the other side of the decimal and click, then I can change in a much coarser sort of way. But let's say I want to have like, you know, 125.8, uh, 
Okay, so float just means decimal point. In computer language, float means decimal point. So this is a floating point number. Um, int is like an integer. It has no decimal point. It's just whole, whole numbers. numbers. Yeah, zero, negative, whatever. So you, yeah, you can go negative, you can have zeros, you can go up to, I don't know what the range is, but uh, so int and float are two different types of number boxes. And you can make them by making a new object and saying uh, number, um, or flow, flow num, flow num. So number and flow num. Those are the actual names of those objects. Right. And then they go into print. Anything that goes into the print object gets displayed in the console. You can clear the console down here and just erase it all out. Um, oh, actually, in Max 8, they're going to have all kinds of new fancy stuff you can do in the console. Like you can filter things and uh, looks pretty fun. looks pretty groovy. But we're in Max 7 right now. Okay, so Command M will open and close the console, just so you know. Um, I think that's it. Yep. Okay.